Hey guys, this is Sweet Holy Justice, and today I want to talk to you about avoiding temptation. So by temptation, I mean the desire to do something wrong, and in this case, sinful. Watch out and pray so that you will not fall to temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matthew 26, 41. Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet, without being scorched? On his feet without being scorched, Proverbs 6, 28. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And the ways that I say we can avoid temptation uh, would be eliminate all opportunity um, for sin. So stay in the word of God and prayers, first one. Avoid triggers to sinful thoughts. Be careful of what company you keep around you. And be careful of the places you go and avoid being alone at all times, as in isolating yourself in the world. Stay in prayer and in the word of God. When we don't pray or read God's word, our spirit gets weak and our flesh becomes stronger. But when we get stronger in spirit, the spirit becomes willing and our flesh is weak, making it easier for us to not... um, um, for us to say no to temptation. So, yeah, so when we get in the spirit, it makes it e- easier for us to rebuke the enemy and shut down all opportunity for temptation. Therefore, we must always be alert because Satan is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. This was mentioned in First Peter. The devil does not take breaks or vacations, therefore we can't. And we must always stay alert and be ready, and therefore we will not fall into temptation. Next point is um, avoid triggers to sinful thoughts, as in guarding our heart and controlling our thoughts. So therefore, we must be careful what we watch and see. You can't be watching stuff like porn and, you know, uh, looking at people and watching movies about sinful stuff. And we must be careful about what we listen to, because that also sinks into our spirit. We must be careful about what we talk about and the conversations we have with people and the places that we go. For example, in relationships, we can get in our feelings sometimes and do stuff that we don't need to be do and let our flesh take over. Therefore, we must stay in the word of God and be alert um, of our physical, of the physical realm even more so than when we are single. Jesus said, even if a man looks at a woman and lusts after her, he has committed adultery in his own heart. And... If us in relationships are doing things that are making us think about being with that person in in inappropriate ways, then we are committing that sin in our heart as well. So my advice to couples that aren't married, you don't need to move in together until you're married, no sleepovers, limit the excess of time alone, and complete privacy in unusual places, places that give you or encourage you to slip into temptation. Avoid conversations about sex and anything that will remind you of it. And you don't need to do any inappropriate touching, kissing in the wrong places, or looking at each other's body because those are all sinful. And that's flirting with temptation. Other things we must avoid is the bad company. And in that case, you can be negatively influenced by your friends. So if your friends are always encouraging you to do sinful things and go out and do things that you know God does not want you to do, then you need to cut them off. And I'm not saying be mean to them. You can still pray for them and talk to them. But as far as hanging out and going out and doing things, if you know they're going to cause you to sin, you don't need to do it. Jesus said if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven mangled than to throw your whole body in hell or go in hell with your hand. So cut off all bad things that are causing you to sin. And don't go to bad places, places where you should not be. And in those, by me, places where people partake in sinful stuff. Or if you're, let's say, in a relationship with somebody, and it's kind of with the both points. If you know you're going to go to your house and you always end up committing that sin in your house, or this particular person has a bunch of stuff in their house that reminds you of doing some things and just an encouraging Um, they encourage you to do those certain things, then don't go to their house. Um, Or if their house gives you an opportunity to sin, or wherever the place is. And also isolating yourself in the world. And when we isolate ourselves, um, we set ourselves apart for the enemy to get us. 
that makes us more vulnerable to the enemy. For example, most people who commit suicide, they're alone when they do it. What good person would watch someone take their own life? We need a shoulder to cry on, someone to talk to. The Bible says Christians should fail not to assemble. So this is all I have for you guys. I hope this video was helpful in avoiding sin or anything else. And please give this video a like and subscribe and click the bell as well so you can be notified when I make any other videos. God bless you.